Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today because it is International Women's Day, the day that I am filming this, and I wanted to do a video about authors, uh, female authors specifically, that I have not read or have read. And I, it's been a while since I did a really spontaneous video, so I have a plan about how I'm gonna do this. Uh, first, I feel like I should point out I'm in a bit of a different position. So uh, I, I usually work on the couch, which is over here with the dogs, and that is kind of ruining my back. And with the pandemic and everything, I've had to fight being like sedentary. So I have sort of a makeshift standing desk on this bookshelf <laughs> right here. And I thought it might be fun to try to shoot from here. Hopefully this is not too um, obnoxious, this light here. I, I tried without it and the light from the front window uh, was making this side of my face really dark. So hopefully it's okay. I, I don't think you've met this guy before. So real quick, before we get into the actual video, this guy was a gift from my father to my niece. She was only about three years old at the time. And when he gave it to her, she was terrified and instantly started crying. So it became a gift to me instead. And now he just kind of lives right there. So if you see a zombie over my shoulder, that is why. Now let's get into the actual video. So I think the, the way I came up with this, it'd be kind of spontaneous and a little bit fun is that I'm gonna pull up Google on my laptop, which is right here. And I'm going to enter best female writers. And we will go through the results and we'll see how many of them I've read, how many I haven't read, maybe some I need to read more. I, I had, a, I was working on a list of writers, but I thought this would be a fun thing. So maybe, I don't know if I'll do a separate video of my, you know, my own list of female authors that I want to read or need to read. And, or maybe I'll just wrap it into this week's Friday Reads video. We'll see, to be determined, but let's get going on this. So I am going to open Google. I didn't want to cheat, so I haven't done it yet. Okay, Google best female writers. You get to watch me type, which is really exciting for you. Okay, the first result, Toni Morrison. Excellent choice. I have been working on her books. I had previously only read one of her books, Home, before she died. Since then, I have read The Bluest Eye, and Song of Solomon, and I, I've really loved both of them. Home, I thought was just okay. I read Love last year, and it was it was it was fine. Didn't love it. Certainly not as much as the others. But uh, Bluest Eye and Song of Solomon are tremendous. Song of Solomon was my favorite read from last year. So yes, I have read Toni Morrison, and I would very much like to read more. The next one is Margaret Atwood. I've only read one Margaret Atwood book. And you can probably guess what it is. It's The Handmaid's Tale. I don't think I'm going to be reading the sequel. I do want to read a lot more of Margaret Atwood. I have Oryx and Crake and The Blind Assassin. The Blind Assassin is the one that she won the Booker Prize for. And I, I definitely want to read more of her books. But so far, I have only read The Handmaid's Tale, which I loved. I remember that being a really great book. It's been a long time since I read it. I feel like I should probably reread it at some point. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the next one is Virginia Woolf. I have read one Virginia Woolf book, and that was Orlando in college. I was to, uh, One of the first classes I took at Columbia was a, a class, uh, I can't remember what the name of the class was, um, but we read a lot of really great books, and I remember a lot of the other books a lot more than I remember Orlando. I remember that being a sort of frustrating read. I didn't really like it. This was maybe 2009, and... Part of me feels like I should revisit it, but part of me also feels like there are, are other Virginia Woolf books that I need to get to. Mrs. Dalloway, A Room of One's Own, some of the famous ones. I mean, Orlando is a famous one, for sure. But I feel like there would be other ones that I would try to read before I would reread Orlando and see if I like it any better now. <laughs> and I feel like it can be difficult when you're taking have like a heavy course load and you're doing a lot of reading sometimes frustra general frustration comes out on the books. And so maybe there was a lot going on and that's part of why I, I was having a really hard time getting into it. But so she's an author, I've read one, didn't really like the result, um, but I feel like I should revisit her at some point. Next is Jane Austen. Yes, I have absolutely read Jane Austen. Are you kidding? Pride and Prejudice is, of course, great. Sense and Sensibility is wonderful. Persuasion is an underrated gem in her library. I, if you have not read that one, please pick up Persuasion. There are great adaptations of it as well. So, yes, I love Jane Austen. I have not read Emma. 
which I feel like I need to do. I've seen film versions. Uh, I've seen Clueless, which is a modernized adaptation in the 90s. I've, I saw the Emma uh, with Gwyneth Paltrow in the 90s. Don't remember it very well. I saw the new Emma last year. That was one of the last two movies that I saw in a movie theater before we all went into lockdown. <laughs> and But I've never read the actual book, and I have not read Mansfield Park, but I saw the, I think it was a 1999 adaptation of it, which I liked. I just have never gotten around to reading it. So I've read a lot of Jane Austen, loved a lot of Jane Austen, but need to do more. Mary Shelley. I have not read Mary Shelley because I haven't read Frankenstein. Has she published anything else? This is the danger of doing things that are spontaneous because uh, I, I can't look into things in advance. Let's just open her profile. Mary Shelley. Because honestly, Frankenstein is the only book of hers I can think of. Certainly the only one I can think of that would be in publish. Uh, publish. Okay, novels. Wikipedia, our old friend. She does have other writings that I have never heard of. So that'd be something I'd have to look into. But I've definitely never read Frankenstein. And again, I've seen film adaptations, but I've never read Frankenstein. So she's an author I need to get to or should get to. Uh, the next one is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I have read uh, two books by her. Uh, she had a really, really short book that was just a, t a TEDx talk that she gave about being a feminist, and I don't remember the title of it. And I read um, Americana. I don't talk about her very much on my channel anymore because I didn't. I was unaware of this, but she had some kind of problematic comments about transgender people. She said that. Uh, kind of in the J.K. Rowling vein, she said that uh, transgender women are not women. And then she kind of walked back some of the statements, but not really all the way. And she still thinks trans transgender women should be in sort of like a different field than regular women, quote unquote, regular women. So I haven't read the book of hers that most people really love the most, but I feel like she's definitely an author I'm tabling for right now. So... The next one is Zadie Smith, and I have read one book by her. I read On Beauty, which is the uh, modernized version of Howard's End. And to be honest with you, I'd rather just read Howard's End, <laughs> which is one of my favorite books. So, I mean, there's a really steep hill to climb if you're going to do a modernized version of Howard Howard's End, because the original is just so good. I have not read any of her other books, and I feel like I really need to get around to that, because she's an author a lot of people talk about. Uh, I, I really, I did like a lot of the aspects of On Beauty. It's just I'd read, like I said, I'd rather read Howard's End. So <laughs> she's an author I really need to deep, dig a little deeper into and spend some time with. Next is George Eliot. I have never read George Eliot. Oh, wow. <laughs> that one hurts. Uh, yeah, I, I really need to get around to George Eliot because I feel like that's a gaping hole in my um, literary experience of the world because yeah I, I never read her in high school I feel like most people read George Eliot in high school and I didn't I had weird English classes uh they were supposed to be structured like college courses where you got to pick a course for half a year and uh it would kind of dive in deep that so I, I took really fascinating English classes I just ended up not reading a lot of the things that most people would read in high school oh the next one is <sighs> An author I don't talk about on this channel, I already mentioned her name in this video, but I'm not going to talk about her. Here, her books are, I've read her books, uh, most of her books, they're sitting in my closet back in the library thinking about what they have done. They know what they did. Next is Alice Walker. I've only read The Color Purple. I remember absolutely loving The Color Purple, and it's one, I would say it's one of my favorite books. I really need to reread it, and I, I absolutely want to. My husband and I were actually just talking about that book recently. And I really want to get around to it. I've heard great things about some of her other books at the Temple of My Familiar. Uh, she has been a little problematic. Uh, I don't know. Harper Lee. So I have read the only book of Harper Lee's that was supposed to be published. And I am very happy leaving it there. To Kill a Mockingbird is one of my favorite books. I absolutely love it. It is, it is something that a lot of people get attitude about. But it feels obvious. Everybody's read it in high school a, a while ago, a long time ago. This may have changed over the last 15, 20 years, however long it's been. Uh, they did a study of um, what book uh, is the most widely read in the United States. And they found that of people who have only, who claim to have only read one book in their life, To Kill a Mockingbird is the one that is most frequently that book because it is so often taught in schools. But so because of that, I feel like a lot of people roll their eyes at it, but it is actually a really, really good book. I have not read Ghost of the Watchmen. I do not plan to read Ghost of the Watchmen because I feel like the circumstances of its pub publishing are not great. And the fact that she did not want it published um, and that they kind of manipulated her into getting permission 
it just grosses me out. So I'm gonna take a pass on that one and just remember to kill a mockingbird the way it was. Allow me to have a sip of coffee before we continue. Oh, next is Emily Bronte, and this is this is also embarrassing. We have George Eliot, now we have this because I've never read a book by any of the Bronte sisters, not a single one. I feel like I should fix that. I don't think I'm gonna love them, given what a lot of the feedback that I've heard on them, but I feel like it's something I need to do. So I'll get around to it at some point, hopefully. <laughs> uh, next is Maya Angelou. I've never read a book by Maya Angelou. I have read individual poems scattered you know, here and there uh, over the years, but I've never read a full book. And I have a copy of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, and I just, I really need to do it. I really need to do it because I love her, <laughs> but I've never read one of her books, which feels like a weird position to be in. So I, got, I have to fix that. Uh, next is Louisa May Alcott. Check. I've read Little Women. I read it recently. Uh, that was a buddy read with Britta Bowler, and I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a wonderful book. I haven't read any of her others. I, I don't feel as much of a burning need to read them compared to Little Women. I think I've kind of, I know enough about her life, and I, I, I know about Little Women that I feel like I'm comfortable. <laughs> this feels terrible, but like checking that box and moving on to like George Eliot or the Bronte sisters or Maya Angelou, people like that. Zora Neale Hurston. I have read one book by Zora Neale Hurston. And that was Barracoon. So it's not the one that most people have read. Uh, Barracoon was uh, about interviews that she did with uh, a man who was believed to be the last remaining uh, or last surviving slave. And uh, it, it was a fascinating book. A bit of a flawed book. It hadn't been published before, I believe, when it was released just a few years ago. And I, I really need to read Their Eyes Were Watching God. I really, that's another book that a lot of people read in high school and I didn't. Uh, and I absolutely need to get around to it. I think that's a book that I'm gonna love if and when I do get around to it. And then there's Sylvia Plath. I've never read Sylvia Plath. <laughs> I, I've never read her poems. I've never read The Bell Jar, nothing. And that, that, that is also something that I really need to fix. But the next one is Agatha Christie. And I've read a lot of Agatha Christie books, so I got that one covered. <laughs> uh, I, I remember really loving them. Some of them I want to reread because I read a lot of them. We, I actually read and then there were none in my freshman year of high school. Now my freshman year of high school, I was in a different high school, so it wasn't set up like um, the college courses that I mentioned. And our English teacher actually assigned, and then there were none, and we had to keep a journal of what we thought was really going on because it was a mystery, which was a really fun exercise. And I really liked the book, so I picked up a bunch of her others. I'm not a huge fan of the Hercule Poirot books. I'm much more of a Marple fan. <laughs> I think she's adorable and wonderful, and Poirot is just, I, I don't respond to that very well. But I feel like this is the, Agatha Christie is the example I always go to when I talk about the mystery thriller books that I like. And kind of what I'm coming around to on that is that I really like what they call the classical whodunit, the styles. And she is someone who is, she definitely was flawed. I believe that, like, I'm actually not a huge fan of Murder on the Orient Express. But I really respect the ways in which her most famous books really subvert what a mystery can do or is supposed to do or is expected to do. And a lot of her books have been published for a while. <laughs> so I feel like explaining why wouldn't be too much of a spoiler, but I'm, I'll leave it there for now. Uh, if you're familiar with her most famous bo books, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, and then there were none, uh, th th her play, The Mousetrap, you kind of know what I'm talking about. So I, I just, even though I don't like a lot, as, or a lot, I, even though I don't like parts of what she wrote, I really respect what she did as a writer. Next is Shirley Jackson. I actually read my first Shirley Jackson book last year, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, and I, I, I liked it a lot, didn't love it. I feel like it's something that has become a, a bit of a trope but at the time was probably groundbreaking. And it's difficult when you're so familiar with what she's doing to go back to that mindset where it would have really been revolutionary and mind blowing. Like that's a book that really would have benefited from, or at least for me, from being read back then, especially now when we're in this rut of mystery thrillers that are, have that unreliable narrator. Uh, and you always, you kind of learn to expect a twist at the end. So I felt like my brain unraveled the secrets of We Have Always Lived in the Castle and just being able to go along on the journey would have been much better. But I do want to read more books by her at some point. I may have read The Haunting of Hill House in high school because they had that movie The Haunting that came out in 1999. And I, when I saw it, I hated it. But 
I think I may have read it in the buildup and I don't remember anything about it. So that would be one I have to revisit. I really need to read the lottery because that's one everybody kind of talks about. So I need to do more on Shirley Jackson. Doris Lessing, Nobel Laureate, I have not read her and I actually really want to. I've heard really good things about her. So that's one I definitely need to get to. Uh, Joan Didion, my beloved. <laughs> I talked about one of her books recently. Uh, her new collection of previously published works that, uh, well, not previously published, uh, works that had not been collected into a book, I believe. And I really respect her. I might want to read some of her fiction at some point, but her nonfiction to me is just tremendous. Slouching Toward Bethlehem, The Year of Magical Thinking, Blue Nights is a flawed book, but it really speaks about grief in a beautiful way and adds layers to The Year of Magical Thinking. I'm a big fan of Joan Didion. The next one is Isabella Allende. I really need to get to her. I was supposed to get to her last year and I didn't. As part of my Read Outside Your Comfort Zone challenge, I wanted to explore different continents other than North America and Europe. And she was the author I really wanted to read for South America. And I ended up reading a Gabriel Garcia Marquez book instead. So I really need to get around to her at some point. I've heard her recent books are not as good as her older books. But I'm still really looking forward to getting to her. I, I, I would happily explore a lot of her older books and be happy there. We're going to go through some of these last ones really quickly. Next is Ursula K. Le Guin. I tried reading The Left Hand of Darkness last year and really wasn't into it. I think it felt a lot more like a treatise on gender and gender roles in society than an actual novel. I struggle with sci-fi. And I, I, I wasn't really allow, allowing myself to engage with that. I think part of it was that I was reading it when I was really stressed about the election and all that news stuff going on. So that may have impacted my ability to read it. I would like to revisit it at some point because it has a lot of really smart things to say about gender, but it definitely is not as revolutionary now as it was back then, which is probably a good thing. And I definitely want to explore some of her other books. Joyce Carol Oates. I have a sort of mixed relationship with her. I really love Blackwater, which is a novella about, uh, it's, it's inspired by the life of Mary Jo Kopechny, who is the woman. I, I'm always amazed I can remember the name Mary Jo Kopechny, and I think I remember it because of Joyce Carol Oates, but anyway. So she was the woman who drowned in a car after an accident with Ted Kennedy. And instead of going for help, he went home and called the family lawyer. So the book is told from the perspective of a woman who uh, meets a man from a big political family uh, at a party, leaves with him, they get into an accident and uh, end up underwater. He is able to escape the car and she assumes that he has gone for help. But as the water rises in the car, it's a bleak book. But it's a really well done book. Uh, I've also read Zombie, which is kind of inspired by Jeffrey Dahmer. It's okay. I tried reading Blonde last year as a buddy read with Britta Bowler and didn't, I ended up DNFing it. Actually, Britta did as well because it felt in a weird way like she was antagonistic toward Marilyn Monroe and Norma Jean Baker. And I really didn't like that. The kind of hostility was a little bit off-putting and I didn't really know, I didn't really like the way the book was structured. And that was a disappointment because I really thought I was going to like that book. So, I'm a little bit all over the place. I said I was going to go through these last ones fast, and then we got to Joyce Carol Oates, and I completely derailed. Uh, Octavia Butler, absolutely need to read her. I'm really looking forward to reading one of her books, even though I'm not really, I, I, as I said, I struggle with sci-fi and fantasy, but I'm, I definitely want to read Octavia Butler. Uh, Edith Wharton, if you have not read The Age of Innocence, get a copy of The Age of Innocence. It is a fantastic book, especially if you like Jane Austen, and I know a lot of people have read Jane Austen and enjoyed Jane Austen, uh, please read Edith Wharton because she doesn't have, she's not as high on like the comic sensibility. She's not as high on like the kind of romantic aspect as Jane Austen, but she absolutely has a similar style and she absolutely captures the same sort of social satire, not, not satire, but she, that same skewering of society. It's fantastic. I really need to read more of her books. Uh, I have The House of Mirth, and I really want to get around to it. Uh, Amy Tan. I've read, uh, I think, two books by her. The Bone Setter's Daughter. Um, oh, that's it, actually, I think. And I, I have a copy of The Joy Luck Club. I really need to get around to it, because I loved The Bone Setter's Daughter. Roxane Gay. I read her book Hunger. Have not read any others. I want to read more. Daphne du Maurier. I really want to read Rebecca. Everybody's a huge fan of that one. Uh, and I'm a big fan of the film adaptation from 1940, the Hitchcock one. It's so good. Donna Tartt. I've read the Gold... 
Well, I DNF'd the goldfinch. I am not a huge fan. So, what, but people tell me The Secret History is a really, really wonderful book. So I feel like that's one that I should give a try. I have a copy of it as well. Okay, uh, Jhumpa Lahiri, let's run through. I have read and absolutely love The Inter Interpreter of Maladies. That is a collection of short stories, won the Pulitzer Prize. It's fantastic. I remember really liking the namesake, but uh, I feel like that's something I might need to reread. I might not love it as much the second time around. Um, whoa, what was the one after that? Um, Inherited Earth, something like that. Um, is okay. And I read The Lowlands. I absolutely don't remember anything about it, though. So... That's my journey with Jhumpa Lahiri. She has a new one coming out this year called Whereabouts. I would really like to read that. Uh, Flannery O'Connor, I have a collection of her stories. Have not gotten around to reading it. I, she's a, bit, a little problematic if I remember it correctly as well, but I, I, I do want to read those stories. Uh, Willa Cather, My Antonia is a really good book. I really enjoyed that, and I want to read more of her books. Uh, My Antonia is fantastic. I read it, I actually listened to it on audio, and I, that was a good experience, so I may seek out some more of them in that format. Elena Ferrante. I read the first book of the Neapolitan series and it's a little slow, but I thought its examination of like this friendship and the way it develops over time and the class structure of Italy is just fascinating. So I do want to read the rest of the books in the series, but I'm kind of, as you can tell, it's been over a year. I'm so I'm kind of slowly working my way through them, but I do want to read the others. Mary Wollstonecraft, have not read her. Uh, and I feel like I'm kind of missing out on that one. But uh, there are other people on this list that I would probably get to first, if I'm being honest. Uh, Arundhati Roy, I read The God of Small Things somewhere around the year 2000. I remember absolutely loving it. I feel like I've heard people who hate it a lot recently. So I feel like it's something I need to revisit at some point. I, had, I read... Her more recent book, The Ministry of Happiness, didn't like it all that much. So there you go. Angela Carter. I have read The, uh, the Bloody Chamber and other stories. I have a copy of it in my room. And uh, I remember liking it. Don't remember too much about it, though, if I'm being honest. Alice Munro. I read Hate Ship, Friendship, Love Ship, Courtship, Marriage when it was first published. And I feel like she's an author I really need to revisit. Because when, that book, when was that book published? Somewhere around uh, 2005, I want to say. And so I would have been in my early 20s. And um, I think Alice Munro is an author who, at least for me, uh, I would benefit from reading later in life. I feel like I would be able to relate to it a lot more. And I've heard really good things about her. She went on to win a Nobel. And I need to revisit her, for sure. That's the only one I've tried. Louise Erdrich, I'm all over the map with. I absolutely love Plague of Doves. And the other books of hers that I've read have been kind of, you know, on a spectrum. <laughs> but I do want to work my, continue working my way through her books. Love Medicine is really high in my TBR for some point. Emily Dickinson, I've never read her. I really need to get around to her. I'm trying to, I do want to read more poetry, so I feel like that would be a good one. Uh, Jeanette Winterson, I read, um, oh, what's it called? Lighthouse Keeping? And I had really high expectations and was a little bit disappointed. So um, I, I'm still interested in reading more books by her, but that one was a bit of a letdown for me. Uh, Marilyn Robinson. I read Gilead when it was first published. And just like Alice Munro, that is something I feel like I need to revisit. Because at the time I was like, well, it's good, but whatever. And I read the first page of it when I bought a copy of it last year. And it made me cry. <laughs> so she is absolutely an author I need to revisit. Uh, Hilary Mantel, I am working my way through the Thomas Cromwell books. I um, have read Wolf Hall and The Mirror and the Light. Love both of them. Uh, and I am going to be reading The Mirror and the Light this month for the Booktube Prize. Jasmine Ward, I've read Salvage the Bones and Sing Unburied Sing. Both are fantastic. I expect she will be winning a Pulitzer Prize at some point. Uh, I would be surprised if she doesn't. Jennifer Egan, I've read her Pulitzer Prize winning book, uh, The Visit from the Goon Squad. I saw her speak at the 92nd Street Y. Fascinating woman. I have Manhattan Beach and Look at Me on the shelf and need to get around to them. Uh, Oprah Winfrey is on this list. I admire her book club. But I can't really think of anything she's read. <laughs> and Tyler, I, the only book of hers that I have read is um, the one that won the Pulitzer, which the name is, uh, and the name is escaping me. The one about the older couple on like a road trip and they fight <laughs> and it's breathing lessons. And I did not really like it. Maybe that's something I should revisit now as I've gotten older because I read it around the time I was 20 and, you know, 
Not to knock on 20 year olds, sometimes you don't understand as much about the world as you think you do. I really wanna read Dinner at the Homesick Restaurant. That is the one I've heard the most about. And I really wanna read The Accidental Tourist as well, which was a Pulitzer Prize finalist. Uh, Patricia Highsmith, I read The Talented Mr. Ripley in the 90s when that adaptation of it with Matt Damon came out. And I remember not liking it as much as the movie because the movie put obstacles in his path that he had to overcome. And it felt like in the book, he just manipulates his way through everything and it's kind of boring from that perspective. But maybe I need to reread it now because I think I would appreciate the character a lot more. I've also read The Price of Salt, which was adapted into the movie Carol. That is a tremendous book. I love it. Uh, Yag Yassi. Yes. And I love Homegoing. I love Transcendent Kingdom. Both are fantastic. There are three more. Elizabeth Gaskell. I read, um, oh, what is it? Cranford. Not this past year would have been in 2019 for Victober, and I absolutely loved it. I need to read more of hers. Uh, North and South is the one that most people kind of recommend. Uh, so that's the one I need to look for. Cranford just happened to be available on audio, and it was a great audio production. It was such a good book. If you haven't read Elizabeth Gaskell, and again, if you're a Jane Austen fan, please check out Elizabeth Gaskell. Kate Chopin, have not read her. I've heard good things about her writing. I just haven't gotten around to it. So that's another one I need to. And then, oh, the last one is Judy Bloom. I was a huge Judy Bloom and Beverly Cleary fan when I was a kid. I uh, read so many of her books. And because it's been such a long time, I don't really remember much about them, but I absolutely read them, absolutely loved them. And there you have it. Those are the best female writers according to Google. So if you type that into Google, uh, you get that bar across the top with names and images and like dates of their lifetime if, if they are passed on. Uh, that is what I am basing this list on. So if you want to uh, check it out, that that's where the list comes from. Nothing really scientific. That's just the way it is. So I would love to hear if you've read any of these, if you have other recommendations, people you think should be on Google's list. Please let me know, drop it in the comment section down below. Happy International Women's Day. As always, I really appreciate your time. I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.